Welcome back to part four of the 2019 Smart Out Moment Awards. We are on the on-air personality awards. So you're going to hear our personalities on the air. Ha, 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 ha. Worst joke of the year. So <laughs> why not? I had to. Uh, we are going to break down all the things that aren't related to the wrestlers themselves, essentially. Because we have coming up after this is part five. That is the wrestler awards and Again, we can like lump these together as just like the people of the year <laughs> outside of the technical skills and the writing and the programs and stuff that we've already talked about. But I kind of feel like they're still worth keeping separate a little bit because not a lot, a lot of love gives uh, put out there for some of these different things. So we're going to talk managers. We're going to talk a broadcast team and all the other kind of things in between there. And again, just a reminder, as I always do, leave your comments below. Tell us your thoughts on our picks and tell us what your picks are. Make sure that you're following all of our accounts on all the social medias and f checking out all the typical stuff that we usually plug, but I'm not hitting you with a thousand plugs this time. Um, let's just get right into this with the manager or valet, the best and the worst of either of those kind of categories. So it's, it's somebody who hangs around a wrestler and they're not necessarily wrestling all the time themselves. Your options this year were Catalina, as they like to, to say. They wrote her down as Carolina, Carolina, called her Catalina. Her real name's Catalina. She popped up on two episodes and she was, uh, you know, forgettable for a lot of people probably don't even know that she was there. There's Drake Maverick. He is no longer a manager or a valet, but he was earlier this year with yeah, AOP. Kind of peeing this year. Yeah, peeing on people's robes and stuff. There was Lana uh, with both Rusev and Bobby Lashley. Leo Rush with Bobby Lashley, Maria Canellis with Mike Canellis, Paige with the Kabuki Warriors, Paul Heyman with Brock Lesnar, Sami Zayn is there with Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro, and apparently Mojo Rawley, I guess now, I don't know, that's, that's kind of strange, and Zelina Vega. I don't think I'm forgetting about anybody, but if I am, by all means, I forget some stuff here and there, and that kind of sucks, but still. Like, Maurice, I don't think that she popped up a single time this year. I think December was the last time we had seen her, so that's 2018, so that doesn't count. Would you class one of the... I, I don't... Because I, I assume one of the... I think one of the Bollywood boys was injured this year, but I assume one of them stuck around with Jinder Mahal for a while. Jinder has been out for most of this year, actually. Well, yeah, but he was here at the start because he's won the 24-7 title multiple times, yeah. so yeah, he has been there. I wouldn't classify them as manager. They were more so just sort of underlings. They were boys. Maybe, you know, maybe if you maybe if you constituted like that. I mean there's there's wiggle room. So I'm not gonna hound uh hound down people and be like, uh I'm gonna find where you live and you know, you can't pick the Sing Brothers. So, you know, it's all in fun. Uh what wasn't fun for me though was for my worst pick is the Catalina. She was just why did they bring her on to have her accomplish nothing? She didn't even help Sin Cara beat Andrade once. And she wrestled a match and she sucked. That's just... There's no positives that came out of that. At least with, like, everybody else. They might have done something good this year. She didn't do anything. Uh, Out of the options, I feel like, for the worst, it has to be someone who... Like, Carolina makes sense, but just because she was such an afterfall i kind of just moved past her but someone who the role of the manager is supposed to be able to support the wrestler in a certain way whether it's to help interfere in their matches or to do a lot of promo work for them on their behalf whereas i feel like i would go with probably maria canellis because her role as manager eventually became to belittle and abuse the person that she was a manager for and so just basically doing the complete opposite. It wasn't helping Mike Kernelis win any matches or help get him over in any way. It was just to make him seem even more worthless than he was already being presented as. But I'd also put a special mention for Paige because essentially they just put with the Kabuki Warriors because, you know, those Japanese people, we can't understand anything they're saying, so how can they get over? And she just proceeded to just stand there and do absolutely nothing for the best part of like six months. That's and if she showed reason. up. Yeah, I know. And cause it's the fact more often than not, she didn't even show up. And I, I like Paige. I think she does have a lot of personality and can be used in her role with like WWE backstage to add a bit of personality to things. But it's just a case of 
because she can't really do ma- a manager role because she can't get attacked or she can't like do anything physical because of her injury. So she all she can do is just stand there and root them on. And she wasn't like getting the Kabuki Warriors big matches. She wasn't cutting majorly like amazing promos for them. She had to go a, uh, away for a while to get neck surgery. So she, and in that time, the Kabuki Warriors became more and more over than they ever had been with Paige there. So yeah, she was pretty much pointless. But at least she wasn't outwardly like taking shots at them while she was away. So Maria Canellas is the worst. Well. I'm going to just say Paige because of everything Callum just said. Took the words right out of my mouth. And I'll also add, uh, those Japanese can't get over with their lack of speaking to English. And wouldn't you know it, how do they get over? By speaking Japanese to each other and laughing because we know what we're saying and you don't. (laughs) So, lo and behold, Asuka doesn't need a manager. Asuka never needed a manager. Kairi Sane's awesome. Paige was pointless. And they tried to utilize this as a replacement for the Bellas and then decided to do promptly nothing with it. So, yeah, Paige is definitely the worst. But honorable mention for me, Sami Zayn, because I think he's kind of being wasted. Paige was my number two. If it wouldn't have been Catalina, it would have been Paige. But I actually think that, and I'm putting him down as my best, is Sami Zayn. I think that Drake Maverick is not a good fit for AOP. I think that Lana is obnoxious and not in a good way. Leo Rush, when he was doing his stuff with Lashley, they could have done it a lot better uh, better than what they did. Maria, like Callum mentioned, I don't want a storyline that's all just like that. Page of course sucked. Paul Heyman, he does the same thing all the time. And Zelina Vega, she didn't do as great this year as she's done in previous years. But Sami Zayn, I really like him being the personality for Nakamura and Cesaro because neither of them are really that much promo people. And Zayn, you know, he's having fun with certain things. Like, uh, even just having him backstage with this whole ham thing has been fun. And, like, uh, him trying to give a present to Braun Strowman and Strowman just being like, all right, give me the Intercontinental belt. And Zane, Zane's like, ah, well, they got tag team match. All right, I'll see you later, everybody. Like that kind of thing. Like, I like him being a little pissant. So I'm going to, I'm going to give my best to Sami Zayn. Should have stole the ham from Otis and given it to Strowman to give him these hams. When I was typing that out, I'm like, <laughs> again, what is my job? I'm typing out, Mandy gives Otis a ham and it gets ruined. <laughs> So he apologizes and hugs her and gets sweat all over her. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Mouthful of joy. Ah. He goes so, out with the best. So for my best one, I go with go with the old favorite, Paul Heyman. Hell yeah. I, I just think he adds so much to the Brock Lesnar character. And even if it is the same thing, he he mixes it up enough and he adds so much context to the stories that Brock Lesnar's in that it enhances them. It enhances all the matches that he's involved with. And because Brock's not a promo guy and he always just does his little like one line things, which in in of itself is good. Heyman is invaluable to his overall character. Uh, I wouldn't, Sami Zayn, I think as a manager in terms of just getting involved in matches and doing that kind of stuff and Zelina Vega, they're probably more in that wheelhouse, but I find Sami Zayn's character right now incredibly obnoxious and not in a good way. And like, I can't wait for somebody to shut this guy up. It's more just, okay, as soon as Sami Zayn's on TV, I'll just skip ahead and not see what, anything that he's involved with. And they haven't done enough with Selena Vega and Andrade to make their, their undoubted impact together worthwhile this year. Yeah. And, um... I agree with everything that just came out of Callum's mouth. And I'll say this, Tony, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yes, it's the same thing, but the Irishman is good. And that's because it's De Niro and everybody in their wheelhouse, and they're good. You do not replace something that works, and Paul Heyman really gets the job done. Yeah, but you know, if I want to watch 
the best of Scorsese, I'm going to watch Goodfellas, not Casino. But that doesn't mean that in 2019, The Irishman isn't good. Just because you can go back and watch when it was maybe better doesn't make it not the best thing going today. Yeah, I think with the Sammy Zane thing, it's like you're watching a guy who has been on, I don't know, Broadway or something like that, doing like, amazing material, and then he just turns up at a... He's like doing a, a local, sitcom. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, yeah. Well, maybe even just like a local playhouse or something like that. It's like it's a guy who has so much potential and ability, and he's being reduced down to his very base parts. In front, like reduced to I don't know, a guy that was doing like the Jersey Boys and like Broadway to doing I don't know, uh, a stage production of Little Miss Muffet. At our local school, whatever, <laughs> in a school gymnasium or something like that. Hey, that'll be the best Little Miss Muffet. <laughs> hey, it, it probably would be, but it's still not, it's still like so much worse than what he could have been doing right now. I agree with you that like they are not utilizing him as well as they could, but I do think that he helps Cesaro and Nakamura more than some of the other people help some of the other How? people. How? What does he do for them? Well, what would Cesaro be doing it's if Nakamura, it wasn't for are the Are Nakamura team? and Cesaro over what right now? What are you doing now? Yeah, are, are they over right now? I think that the extent that they are over is only because of Sami Zayn, and they'd be so much worse without him right now. They're doing exactly what they did. You realize Shinsuke has gone a full revolution around the sun, and he's exactly where he was last year, except the belt is different, and it's Sami Zayn and not Lana. Yeah, but this I like I enjoy the Sami Zayn part of it more than the Lana part, and I feel like the fact that Shinsuke Nakamura can't do anything on his own without something like that means that without Sami Zayn, he'd be even worse right now. And the ironic thing is, Nakamura and Cesaro have an ass load of charisma, just right. not for Vince McMahon. Yeah. I think, I, think, I think we just have to let's just move on with Tony choosing the wrong choice and let's go on to the next <laughs> category. I can you see you're doing why so people... well, Tony. You just picked the wrong choice here, but we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll get stronger as the rest of the awards go on. I Tony can see Vince people... McMango over here doing his thing. Oh, see, I don't like a lot of the other things too, so that's where you throw me off with the Vince McMango because if uh, if I was saying that Lana was doing a good job, that'd be a different story. <laughs> I hate the Lana stuff. I'd be totally fine with Lana not being in WWE anymore at this point. That's how bad I hate this angle. But uh, I can see the whole Paul Heyman thing. To me, it's just, you know, at least when Sami Zayn's talking, it's going to be something different, and I'm interested to see where he's going to take it. With Paul Heyman, I know he's going to say, it's a it's a spoiler, it's whatever. It's It's the same thing he's been doing for three years. So I don't need to hear it, you know? Plus, you give Bo- uh, Brock a boombox, and he's still over as fuck. <laughs> he doesn't need it. <laughs> Let's go to celebrity appearance. This might be the last year that we do this. I don't know if I really want to bother tracking celebrities next year. Drop a comment below. Is it worth it? Should we I'll get drop a comment scene? below right now. I, I don't think it's worth it, because I'm yeah. trying to remember a lot of these celebrities. I do know the worst, hands down. Uh, I got a couple of different ones for worse, so I don't even know if we'll agree on that one. But yeah, I don't. I don't know. I think this has kind of outlived its usefulness a little bit. I I like the idea behind it, but every time that a celebrity pops up, I don't want to have to keep writing them down. I got a feeling that this is the the one award that we can just kind of nix, and I don't think anybody's going to be upset about it. So if you are going to be kind of annoyed that we don't do it next year, tell me well enough in advance. Because if not, then I'm just not going to track it, and you're not going to have any options and stuff. So. At least for this year, we'll do it again. Uh, your options are the ones that are listed on the website. It's everybody from like Michael Che and Colin Jost on Raw leading up to WrestleMania. We got like Joan Jett popping up at WrestleMania. Maria Menounez hosting the Hall of Fame again. We got Aaron Andrews and other people popping up for Fox for SmackDown. Cain Velasquez, you can kind of even constitute maybe. You got celebrities popping up on the draft. There's a lot of different varieties for that kind of stuff. And Here's uh my pick for the worst. I almost gave it to Offset when he announced Charlotte Flair, and it was really bad. But then Wally came out, and he was supposed to be hyping up the Street Profits. And he literally said only two lines. We want the smoke, 
And when I say street, you say prophets. This guy's supposed to be like a legit rapper, right? I miss this segment. I have not seen this. Oh yeah, yeah, he is a he's a legit rapper. I know Wale yeah. is a legit rapper, but so, and he's a he's a really big wrestling fan as well. He, a guy that has a career based in music and a career based on the music genre that's supposed to be that you're like a lyricist and that you can think of stuff on the spot. He treats it like he's a, a teacher at like a fun day kind of event where it's the most basic thing you can possibly do. When I say street, you say profits. And he didn't repeat it with anything else. He just kept saying that. And we, we want to smoke. 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 I'm like, oh, my fucking God, do something. I absolutely hated this with a passion. Easily the worst for me. As bad as something like people winning the 24-7 title and doing some stupid stuff. Like, I, I don't like NASCAR, so the whole Kyle Busch and Michael Waltrip thing, like, that I wasn't a big fan of, or Troy Aikman popping up on the draft or whatever. At least those were, like, unoffensive the Wally thing to me was just like, Jesus, this is bad. Who you guys have? Worst. Uh, if we're talking about offensive in terms of the celebrity appearances, because most of them are names that I barely can remember, let alone. I don't even know if they're celebrities half these people, because <laughs> I assume they're more familiar to American audiences than, than they. Oh, yeah. but, uh, but the most offensive is the one that I probably am most familiar with, which is Tyson Fury. <laughs> uh, because Tyson Fury is a horrible human being and he doesn't deserve to have any sort of recognition or appearance this sort of thing. Uh, this is a guy who seemingly doesn't seem to understand the concept the, of gay people and realising that they can have that kind of relationship without burning in hell he calls himself Whoa. the Gypsy King because he essentially lives among the Gypsy people which are a bunch of I'll say a bunch of, but essentially their role is like travellers, essentially, that don't have a place of residence. They travel around in caravans or other, like, like just take up land with tents and stuff like that and just live off those areas as opposed to, you know, actually pay taxes and find a, find a home. Uh, he's just a bit of a, he's just... <laughs> well, I, I can't help the fact that he is... He is, he's a, he's a pretty horrific human being. And so I can't really, I don't really want to give him any sort of plaudits or, and also he had a horrible match with Braun Strowman as well. Like at least these people, most of them decided to stay out of the ring or out of the actual action. He decided to step in the ring and uh, shit up the joint as well. It's like terrible person, terrible match, terrible, terrible, terrible. Cool entrance. (laughs) Okay. So. When, when he said offensive and Tyson Fury, I assumed he was just going to say the patch was offensive. <laughs> oh, you don't know Tyson Fury as well as like, I've seen him in the, oh, the, no. the like, boxing circles and stuff like that. You just like opened my eyes completely. So, wow. Yeah, I almost want to give him the worst well, after he, that. He likes, to, he likes to say these sort of things now that like... He's he's learnt from his mistakes and he's grown up a little bit as if like a thirty six year old man can now just completely turn turn his entire life around or whatever. But it's just like you can just like search his name and it's just like Tyson Fury apologizes after his latest homophobic, sexist, and anti Semitic remarks. It's like his latest ones. Wow, it's just like God. Well, geez, mine won't be nearly as you know Heartfelt in morality, but the fucking draft celebrities sucked. So that's my pick. Oh, that robot was cool. That, that that fox robot was cool. The fox robot was awesome. But how do you cut away to a panel of people and you're like, oh, this is so amazing. We have WWE. Yo, you know who I would draft? Andre the Giant. What the fuck? <laughs> You can't bother to educate yourself with the modern product because you're just like, WWE as a brand is super cool and super over because we remember Stone Cold and Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. But you can't even, like, I think one of them might have actually said, 
Dusty Rhodes, what's he doing now? Like, are you serious? Well, these probably are the same people that are trying to book some of the matches in the Saudi Arabia side of things, where they're like, Yokozuna gets the... <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was offensive to me, but not nearly as really offensive as Tyson Fury is to Callum. <laughs> Well, yeah, let's well, go with uh, best. I'm going Tyson Fury. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I had a couple written down for best options that I thought were kind of fun. Um, overall, Che and Jost, I thought that considering what they were doing, they had some fun. Like, I liked them pissing off Braun Strowman. And, I mean, it kind of... In the grand scheme of things, it wasn't all that great and stuff, but for celebrity appearances, a lot of these celebrity things are garbage, so, you know. Uh, Rob Stone winning the 24-7 title was kind of funny. I don't know anything about Rob Stone, but when that first happened, it was like, that's oh, kind of fun. But the one that I ended up thinking that I figure I probably will give it to is Josiah Williams when he wrapped uh, Adam Cole to the ring. That now was that, freaking cool. That I really liked. That was like the polar opposite of the Wally thing. Although like, I he's knew... not a celebrity, but I get it because that was cool. Yeah, I mean he's uh, kind of a celebrity. He's trying. They're trying to bring an outsider in. He's supposed to be doing some music stuff. Like you know, it's not celebrity like they're bringing in. I don't know. Uh, you know, Kim Kardashian's hosting something backstage on WrestleMania or whatever. Like not that kind of thing. But he's not a contracted person. He's not somebody who's he is contracted, only... isn't he? I don't think so. He I mean, signed he, to them, right? He did the theme for Sean Spears for AEW. I don't That's think true. That they would let him do that if that was the case. But I think he works at the Performance Center. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe he did that theme before he had signed something or something. True. I don't really know. I will say, though, a special shout out. I don't know if it would constitute an actual celebrity appearance, but uh, Ronda Rousey's husband stepping into the ring and fighting off Bret Hart's oh, attack at the yeah. Hall of Fame. <laughs> it's not really a planned appearance, but a cool moment for him, you know? Guy's uh, not in the company at all, and he jumps into the ring at one of the first people. My yeah, I'd almost best... want to give it to David Hart Smith for that. My He's best like is going to be uh, Joan Jett, because I think that's super cool. Joan Jett playing WrestleMania, that's a cool moment. You know, that's a good use of celebrity. I would also say runner-up Rob Stone, because he played it up pretty well, and that was fun. Another great thing about Joan Jett is that she she don't give a damn about your reputation. That's right, and that's a. Uh, but oh, Joan Jett was high up there. I also like Poppy's uh, Poppy's yes. uh, uh, appearance uh, singing uh, Io Shirai to the ring. But I'm gonna go with Michael Shea and Colin Jost because even though some of those segments were a bit cringy, you could tell that they wanted to put their all into it and they really wanted to help like promote this uh, Andre Giant Battle Royal and. You tell they're wrestling fans, so I thought most of the stuff they did was it definitely wasn't in any way super offensive, and in the end it led to a pretty cool moment at the end of that match with them trying to eliminate Braun Strowman just getting chucked out. It's pretty. I think I think they added a lot to that that a match which really doesn't have much going for it year in and year out. Yeah, and they brought some eyes to the whole situation, and I mean, there's a lot of people when they're reviewing WWE stuff, it's like anything that's a little silly. It seems like it's like, oh, that's the worst thing. Ever. Yeah, wrestling's got some silly moments it was, to it. It was a lot better than like those impractical jokers, which looked like they hadn't yeah. seen. They haven't. Yeah. I hadn't watched uh, wrestling since the nineteen nineties. Yeah, much like uh, the Fox people for the draft. Yeah. So let's... Uh, just quick, quick uh, awards update. Yeah, me and Drew are tied right now because after that, I went and voted for Callum. I took the vote off myself and voted for Callum for <laughs> co-host of the year. Uh, let's go to the authority figures. These are anybody with like a you know general manager type of role or any equivalent to that, like you know assistant general manager or so on and so forth. So your options for this year were Drake Maverick for Two Hundred Five Live. Johnny Saint for NXT UK, Stephanie McMahon for WWE in general, Shane McMahon for his role in WWE in general, Sid Scala for NXT UK, Triple H, and Vince McMahon for WWE in general, and William Regal for NXT. Uh, let's go with best. Why not? Let's switch it up a little bit. I am a huge fan of uh, Triple H's contributions to these things, and the guy's got the best finger point in the business. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, that's really great. I also liked, by the way, that instead of doing the finger point with Rhea Ripley, he did the whole like rock out kind of thing. Yeah. And I almost kind of have to tie him, though, because. As... Regal. Yeah, because it's like, fuck. All I had written down for this was Triple H, William Regal, tie, and then war games because <laughs> it's just like the way that he did that i'm like fuck give him the word already just that's that's great i'm gonna i'm gonna agree with you actually because triple h as the nxt authority figure going into survivor series made me want authority figures on raw and smackdown again because it made sense out of the brand warfare and on top of that william regal is fantastic and he says war games so, Regal's never bad. Hunter in this role is never bad. And, yeah, NXT is great. I think I'll overall for William Regal. Even though the Triple H stuff was great, it's it's a little bit difficult because the idea that he was the... Not because I dislike Triple H in any regard. I thought he was doing some great work promoting NXT, but he's clearly biased in the sense that he'll... He's already said that he's put, well, in character, push NXT guys over guys on the main roster or try and get guys on the main roster to come over to NXT, which I guess is kind of his job. But I feel like William Regal, the best thing about his character is the fact that he's impartial. And even though he, he'll obviously hold the heels to task, but he also he won't give the baby faces anything. They have to earn their opportunities. And that's why that's what an authority figure should do. Like, we've had too much of the... Got the guys at the top that are just backing the heels all of the way. Just want someone who who's fair to both sides. Yeah, I mean he's he's pretty great. Oh, he's yeah, and he's great on the mic. Like you say, he says war games really <laughs> yeah. effectively. God, so just have him announce everything else. Like imagine yeah. him saying NXT UK takeover Blackpool too. It's, he'd figure out a way to make it sound cool. Unfortunately, though, I do have to give for one of my worst this johnny saint he always looks like he's just petrified to be on the camera and he's just confused and stuff and i really kind of don't think that they should have him there anymore but if i'm gonna give somebody else the worst over him it's gotta be shane see i disagree shane did his job you might not have wanted that but it's exactly what they wanted out of you. So he did his job. Uh, they they Saint, didn't want me to not want to watch the segments, so they wanted me to wa- want to watch They, they, him they know that. they got you. They know they've got Tony Mango. That he can't go anywhere. Yeah, I mean, that's because I'm getting paid based off of it. So <laughs> they got me no matter what. I'm watching their fucking garbage extra shows to go along with it. So. Uh, I'm not offended by Johnny saying I think the pairing with Sid's gal is fine. Stephanie was pointless this year. And when she came out in the draft and did the, like, she's just straight up neutral, just announcing names, it almost bothered me more so because there wasn't even any personality there. But the worst overall for me has to be Drake Maverick. Here's a guy who has been living this weird double life where he's a comedy character on Raw. Then he's a manager, and then he's this impartial and even at times vehemently baby-faced GM on 205 Live, and I didn't like the weird mix. So I'm going to say Drake Maverick is the worst. I think I have to go with Shane McMahon. Even though he was he was just doing what was being told, after that episode of Raw towards the end of 2018 where they said they were listening to the fans and yeah. how things were going to change and things were going to get better, to just go revert immediately back to type of having a heel authority figure commanding everything, keeping the baby faces down, getting involved in really terrible segments, eating up so much television time which could have been used to actually get people besides another McMahon over to the audience. It was, it's not such like, because other people were less effective, but he his role was entirely obnoxious and absolutely detrimental to every program that he was part of. So yeah, shame at man for me, hands down. 
I will say if anybody needs to go away this year, the only two that I would really get rid of, other than the fact that Shane McMahon's already gone away, you got Sid Scala. You don't need Johnny Sane anymore to for the, that kind of thing. And Drake Maverick, if you don't even need the 205 Live, have like a general manager because they're a part of NXT, take Drake Maverick out of the mix. He really needs to just go. Just have hey, him well, as a SmackDown guy. Well, if you have to get rid of one of them, I'd probably say Vincent Mann is probably right at the top well, of the list. If I'm yeah, I mean, Vince McMahon as an on-air character, I'm cool with. Vince McMahon as the actual guy running the thing behind the scenes, <laughs> that's a different story. I thought Vince was pretty good this year. He, you know, added to the Kofi story. Was this year when, no, it was last year, I think, when he did the then, now, and forever, and he was all tearing up? Yeah, that was in the, um, hey, we're listening to you. Yeah, then, now. <laughs> 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 Isn't it a little sad if the like your seventy something year old dad is more coherent on the microphone than you are now? <laughs> so, well, hold on. To be clear, we we covered this already, but he's just made of something special because the seventy year old dad started getting hit in the head with chairs regularly at the age of fifty plus. So he's just built differently. Sold a soul to the devil or something. I don't know. <laughs> go to extra or other or ancillary or miscellaneous or supporting whatever you want to call it just the other types of characters that are out there there's far too many for me to run down here i mean there's everything from the guy who would hand uh coffee to alexa bliss here and there the people that are in the way jose's conga lines uh rambling rabbit from firefly funhouse george uh george mizan and the mrs dad part of different things the women that pop up for brizongo's entrances there's a apparently a guy who stole elias's guitar case on raw in march I, I don't remember even that happening everybody who's in the entrances for different people the toronto raptors i guess at some point there's a lot of different things that i don't remember specifically but maybe you're a big fan of like the guy at the hotel that checked in drake maverick and renee michelle or Ilana's masseuse, all that stuff. So uh, I had a couple options for best. One of them being Mrs. Dad was fun <laughs> to watch for a portion of this. Uh, I like the fact that they've added the girls to the Brizongo <laughs> entrances. I think that that's funny. They're, they have some of the best entrances. And I forgot to talk about them during the best and worst entrance of the year, but they really have some fun stuff like that. Fake Big E was really funny. It was completely unnecessary. Why did they have Big E's going to return and they have this other dude come out pretending to be Big E for them to go, get the fuck out of here, and then the real Big E comes out? I still don't know what the point of that was, but I thought it was funny. Uh, But my three possible picks, I'll decide at the last minute, are Fake Eric Rowan, because it's really shit, that guy looks just like Eric Rowan. <laughs> like, they could not have found a better person for that. There's also Gary the Goat Garbutt. I don't know if you guys remember him, but he was the janitor. He was the, it, yeah, the, he was the guy that uh, was drafted in for a match with uh, Roman Reigns, right? Or was he just drafted into a match? It was, it was something involving Roman, right? Yeah, it was that uh, they needed to find a partner to end up fighting like Shane McMahon's crew. Oh yeah, and that's when they had that's when they had Cedric Alexander Cedric lose under a mask and it's like yeah. reveal himself as like, oh my god, Cedric Alexander, how great! You, <laughs> he just lost to the other. <laughs> yeah, he's but Cedric Alexander, how amazing! <laughs> but I loved uh, that little bit of the time where it was like it's Gary Garbutt, and we're gonna call him the Goat, and he comes out. I mean, it's it's Cedric, but it's like you think that it's Gary Garbutt in the mask and he starts doing like herd Karanas and stuff. And the crowd starts going ape shit. Cause they're like, the fuck is this guy? You know? <laughs> but I think ultimately what I do have to go with for my pick is the Vince McMahon puppet. I mean, how good is that? He's eating money and he's got devil. It's <laughs> like, it's, and he's just calling out like stupid ideas for, booking Bray Wyatt against uh, Rollins and stuff like I really like that they threw that in there it's like, it's uh, like he doesn't watch his own product and then when they're taking the piss out of him I <laughs> right yeah <laughs> um, I'm going with the Mrs. Dad at Wrestlemania 
Because up until Tony just said the Mrs. Dad, I had forgotten that that was a thing. <laughs> and then I just remembered all the fantastic memes that came out of <laughs> the WrestleMania specifically appearance of Mrs. Dad or Kofi's dad. And God, this guy was a national treasure. It's fa- he's fantastic. I'm still not convinced that he's Mrs. Dad because you look at the Miz and you look at this guy who looks like he spends his days at Walmart. It just well, it's Kofi's dad. Ah, <laughs> that's true. Kofi probably spends a lot of time at Walmart. Uh, this guy is fantastic. I'm going Mrs. Dad all the way. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Dad was high up there for me. I thought George was and added a lot to that, a lot to that feud, especially about the WrestleMania put your jukes up thing. Uh, Renee Michelle, I think, should also get a special mention because a poor lady hasn't been able to consummate her marriage yet. That's like really, really bad. Well, hold on, this uh, is that's on her. She has chosen not to consummate her marriage unless she wins that title. Uh, but yeah, I thought that her segment added a lot to. Just like the have the desperation of Drake Maverick's chase, but I think the best has to be Dominic Mysterio or Dominic Gutierrez, whichever you want to refer to him as. Well, is he Just, ancillary at this point, though? I mean, he's not. As far as I know, he's not signed with the company. So, yeah. I feel yeah, like I, I'd count him. Yeah, I feel like especially for well, just being willing to take that much of a beating from Brock Lesnar, I think you deserve an award for that. And like the stuff that he was doing, like doing the six one nine. Like pretty flawlessly at uh, Crown, well, not Crown Just Survivor Series. That was, I, I think he added a great deal to that feud, and that was one of my favorite feuds of the year. So definitely Dominic Mysterio. You know, you brought up with uh, Renee and Maverick and their whole thing. One of the things that I really liked was their stuff that they would be doing on like Twitter, where like she'd post <laughs> like a modeling photo, and he would re- replace her face on there with the twenty four seven title, and be like much better. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really funny, like little stupid things that they would do. He had one of the lines of the year after he won the title, where I think it might have been Charlie or something. It's like, oh, you won the belt. What are you going to do now? And he just goes, I'm going to get it on with my wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, Drake Fabric was good this year. Shout out to uh, Ike Phillips from this year. He was Colin Jost's uh, therapist at WrestleMania. OTW guy. Nice. Uh, worse though, we had some bad ones, and here are my two picks. Uh, they're both equally bad for different reasons. The big dog mascot. Yeah, I mean that's pretty just... bad. <laughs> but he's a big dog. The barking thing and all that. I I really hated that so much. But there's also we do things different in the state of Tennessee. <laughs> That dude, that whole segment thing. That guy has to get a shout out. That was that was funny though. <laughs> I I mean it's it's absolutely ridiculous and probably came off as ridiculously racist in most yes. people's eyes. <laughs> but, yep, it totally did. <laughs> but you know, it's like they do do things differently in Tennessee, so it's <laughs> like what are you gonna do? <laughs> Woo! Ch- yeah. Yeah, that was uh they they were both pretty bad. I I almost went with the big dog mascot. I almost went with Eric Rowan's twin. Just because, yeah, he does look like Eric Rowan, but it's like, they it was a plot device which led to absolutely nothing. It's like they just, and that abiding memory that end of the episode of SmackDown of just Roman Reigns staring at those two looking at each other. <laughs> and then it just goes off. Like, like it's like, after watching it, I, like, I need to like, not even just stop watching wrestling, but maybe just stop watching TV in general. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that sort of feeling but I think the absolute worst has to be the fans in the audience asking Sami Zayn questions in the electric chair oh good choice Ooh, they, were the, they were the dirt worst I don't know if they were plants they're the worst actors in history well maybe not in history because they were that um that this is your life Bailey segment from a couple of years ago but they were definitely on that level and if they were actually fans, they really represented us badly. Yeah. So, well, uh, yeah. Definitely. Is it fair to say that we are at a different level than the people who just casually attend a WWE show? Oh, I, I almost say, I'm a, 
No, I almost say we're not because we are more intelligent than that, and yet we still watch. So that's it's true. kind of like we have no excuse. You know, that's fair. Yeah, but see, there's a difference between if they say, we want you to ask a question on Raw, and your question is like, uh, like who, uh, what were some of the questions? They had asked about Sami Zayn, some different things, and it's like, who, who would you like to feud with or something? I think might have been one of them. Yeah. Or would so, you like a match with the, for the Universal title? And it's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I'd at least be trying to say something a little bit with some passion and be a better actor about the whole like, thing. To, to like, the point where Sami Zayn said, fuck's sake, you could have asked me about AEW. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm yeah, going to full on say that I'm better than them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good pick. Yeah. That's that, a great pick. I might have to change mine to that. I forgot about them. Um, I, I have to go with the big dog. It's like, you know, we had just done the fucking thing the day before where we're like, oh, man, animal mascots on a Survivor Series team. This is funny. <laughs> we're glad they don't do this shit anymore and then they give you the fucking big dog it's and this is like what a week or two after the amazing episode that was headlined by adam cole and daniel bryan and you're just like what are you doing yeah it's like uh you could tell one which episode had vincent man behind the scenes on the headphones coordinating everything and which one didn't Bark and louder, then, damn it. <laughs> and then, like, you don't even reveal the big dog or anything. Because he followed him around for, like, three weeks. So you might think, okay, well, you reveal that it's, I don't know, some mid-card guy that you can kind of use to get Roman Reigns over in this feud. But no, it's just the big dog. Hmm. Let's go to announcers. You didn't say your worst. Oh, I didn't. Didn't I say Big Dog or the different Tennessee guy? Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I yeah. think you're gonna pick one. Uh, nah, I think I'd probably go Big Dog. Different in, uh, state of Tennessee thing. That's it's not entirely his fault. The writing's pretty bad too. And things are like that in Tennessee. So, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I can't help. Very differently much. in Tennessee. Yeah, I really hope that somebody <laughs> got like <laughs> at least like a scalding backstage for that. Uh, announcers, those are... I know that a lot of people are confused about this. I, I never quite understood why people think that announcer also means commentary. It's not. They're, they're not announcing. They're doing commentary. So Because they're, they're lazy. You can't differentiate. Yeah. So announcer is the announcers. The people who announce. You know, weighing in at whatever, coming to the ring. It's blah, blah, blah. That's Those are the announcers. So Alicia Taylor is the first as far as alphabetical order goes, and Sarah Schreiber is the last one. It, it even includes Lillian Garcia for her little guest at WrestleMania. Are we all going best for Greg Hamilton here? I mean, the guy's the best in the world, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think one of us has to say it properly. I volunteer oh, one of you. Oh, I'm not going to. So well, <laughs> okay. well, then if Callum's not going to do it, then I just won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you two need to figure out who can win best co-host by who does the best <laughs> best in the world. Um, I don't care about it that much, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, there you go. Uh, yeah, Greg Hamilton, because consistency is great, and he is very consistent. I, I would, yeah, obviously, I, Greg Hamilton, I think, is definitely like a cut above the rest, but I would also give a shout to Andy Shepard from NXT UK. I do just like the way that he, he like his cadence as well. I, I don't I like how he says Ginny, though. You don't, like lot, you don't like a lot of things about NXT UK. You're still waiting on Massive Dave Mastiff. Uh, come on, Massive Dave Mastiff. You gotta do it. But for yeah. some reason, when he says Ginny, he goes, Ginny. Like, what the fuck is that about? How <laughs> well, do you the way spell you're her saying name? it makes me think of Timmy and Jimmy from South yeah, Park. <laughs> that's exactly how he sounds. I don't understand why. I could just be like, Jenny. It's Jenner. So what is there an E-H-R in her fucking name? Um, Overall, he's pretty good, though. Shout out to Alicia Taylor. <laughs> she's not getting the best this year, but she was very good. Yeah, she's solid. She's one of the more solid people that they've had in a while in NXT because that's been the brand that they just sort of put people out there. Like Kayla will do it every once in a while. Mike Rome will do it once in a while. 
I like Mike Rom overall, but JoJo actually she wasn't a part of anything this year, was she? She was, I don't even think she was on a single time. Nope. I'm thinking about it. Hmm. Uh, worst. I don't. So, I mean, remember. Kind of can't constitute JoJo if that's the case. <laughs> I don't remember anything that this person actually called. But considering that I rather enjoy the work of everybody else in this list, I'll say Sarah Schreiber. Yeah. I'd probably go Kayla over Sarah Schreiber. They're tied for me. Yeah, I just don't think. I mean, I mean the obvious, the easy one to go with is Lillian Garcia because it's Lillian Garcia. And but <laughs> I think I think people, especially with the more recent ones they've had occasionally on NXT, I think people gave Lillian Garcia a bit too much of a hard time for her announcing. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, I'll, I'll go Kayla because you guys are going for Sarah. So I thought I'm Kayla going, did well Kayla on that one. Oh yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. They're pretty much like they're pretty much on the same level of just not being particularly good. But like, there's not none of the announcers here are particularly like super offensive or are so clearly terrible at their job. I rather like the uh, Mike Rome, Andy Shepard, Greg Hamilton. Like, it, we finally got away from the well. We hired this one girl and she can't wrestle so uh we'll make her announce people i i like that that we've gotten away from that in recent years uh let's go to broadcast correspondent now these are kind of everybody else in that sort of vein the people who do the interviews the people who are hosting the shows doing the pre-show panel content uh people on like the bump or backstage, or any of those kind of things. And that includes a lot of the same people that are on the announce team, too, because they usually kind of, like Alicia Taylor, for instance, she does the announcing work for NXT, but then if they need somebody to do a backstage interview, she's there. So they just have her do that, too, every once in a while. And these also include Scott Stanford and the people who host Wild Thruha <laughs> and uh, WWE Saturday Night. I guess is still a thing. I forgot to add that into my show list for the other things. So you got Vero Rodriguez, who's married to Finn Balor. You got Natalie Mamo. You got Pat McAfee, JBL as a correspondent and so on and so forth. Uh, my worst, let's go with worst for this. I can't really constitute like the foreign ones. Cause I've never watched any of the shows. So That's fair. I, like, I guess I like special little shout out for the fact that like, I don't know if like Kimena Sanchez is good or bad. She might be awful and she might be amazing. And some of these people too, they're not even on like the far end spectrum, but like, I don't know who Elise Zwick is, but she's somebody. So out of the people that I do know, it's Dan Volmeyer or Evan Mack. They're the worst. Are they on the bump? Yeah, they're on the bump. Uh, Evan Mack, what bothers me about him is I feel like he's such a big personality and whenever he's talking, it's not even like so much that I dislike him. It's that I feel like he kind of takes over whatever he does on the show. So if they're talking about something and he decides that he wants to kind of like go on a rant about Grubhub, he just takes up like three minutes worth of talking about how like, well, Grubhub's the best and this kind of thing and whatever like that. And then it's like, all right, can we fucking move on? I know you're trying to get like your, your bit in, and you're, I, I almost feel like Evan Mack wants to use this as a launching pad for him being a, like an entertainment personality. That's fair. Wrestlers try to do the same thing. Yeah. And Volmeyer, I just kind of feel like I wouldn't necessarily like the guy. <laughs> I hate to say that because I've never met him and stuff, but he seems like he would be like on a chat room bitching about wrestling or something. There's a uh, there are quite a few options in terms of the worst. Um, I'm I'm not a huge fan of Sam Roberts, but at least he's doing a bit of he's now found a, a gimmick which kind of fits him as oh everybody hates this guy let's make yeah. him the most hateable guy possible and it kind of works. I, uh, like it. <laughs> I was I would have assumed at the start of the year, but it would have been either Jonathan Coachman or David Otunga, but they haven't actually been that offensive this year in terms of just like not being any way good but it's not like they're anything special but they're they're 
they're not they're not pushing me away from watching these kickoff shows or anything like that. Uh, realistically, the worst ones are probably one of either Dan Volmer or Evan Mack, just because the bump is not a very good show and they don't come across as the most likable personalities out there. But if I have an opportunity to give uh, JBL the worst for something, then I'm not going to pass it up. So, <laughs> so yep, JBL worst for this one. Uh, David Otunga sucks. Always. Why? Why even have him? The guy. Well, the amount of, amount of the guy asked the what the fuck the Wyatt family was practically. What? Yeah, that's true. <sighs> I mean, you can argue that Dan Volmeyer sucks. But at least he's, you know, kind of on point and he's doing what is asked of him. David Otunga's just got no knack for this, and I don't know why. On the best side of things, though, I got a lot of people that I liked quite a bit. And stop me if it's your pick, but shout out to a couple different people that I didn't pick here. Kathy Kelly being one of them. She's great. I She might be my pick. I'm still thinking about it. I like Matt Camp and Ryan Popola. Uh, Matt Camp seems like he's the type of guy that's just sort of like very knowledgeable, cool, chill dude. Ryan Popola is just kind of like, this is the best thing ever. I fucking love it. Oh my God, this is amazing. Oh, Sasha Banks, she did a moonsault. And I fucking watched it 600 times in a row. It's like, it's, <laughs> all right, like, Popola's cool. So it's me, basically. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, he's obnoxious sometimes, but I do find it kind of charming a little bit. Is Pat McAfee? Like, there's he's fun. Yeah, he's like fun, annoying, and not just annoying. I do like Sam Roberts being a heel, where he'll say things just like, "Oh, the bottom of the barrel pick, Dakota Kai," and like the whole crowd's just like, "Oh, fuck you, dude!" And he's just like, "Ah, she sucks. Fuck you, everybody." Like, I like that. Uh, I do really like Renee Young still quite a bit. And I, she's so much better as a correspondent than on commentary. It's not even close. Uh, and the two other ones that I had written down that I like quite a bit are Charlie Caruso really does her job super, super well. But I yep. honestly think I have to go with Booker T now. Booker is just nuts. <laughs> so he's and in your 5-5 love... right now. Yeah, I mean, he <laughs> he's so funny and weird. And when Booker's on with that weird personality stuff. Like now he's been quoting lifestyles of the rich and famous and he just really wants to get over the <laughs> champagne wishes, champagne caviar. wishes and caviar dreams thing. I don't know why he just like started to make that a thing of his, but he's a fucking lunatic. And I like that. So I think I'm going to actually have to give it to Booker T just because he makes backstage and the, uh, the pre-show is a lot of fun. I like that. Your choice is, well, all these people are great at their jobs, but this fucking guy is crazy. And yeah. <laughs> Charlie Caruso, she can hold down the, the pre-show panel pretty much any day. Renee Young, she's steering the ship on Renee Young. Booker T's just kind of like, ha I'm going to go fucking crazy. And you're like, <laughs> give it to Booker. <laughs> yeah. I'm going with Kathy Kelly. She's fantastic. She's good at her job. She seems like a genuine fan. She seems like a, a person you would actually enjoy being around. Shout out to Renee Young, who very much falls into the same category. I'm a fan of Christian in terms of his work on backstage because Christian has such a a personality that I can really get on board with because you know that he can say some stuff that's really cutting and but say it in a way where the person doesn't know that they're being offended almost. <laughs> so it's like that's the sort of guy that I can relate to. Uh, yeah, the compliments and stuff. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, I think punk stuff has been good so far. It's probably not as far as I'd hope that he'd be going, so I'm not going to give him what just yet but maybe if he goes a little bit harder next year then maybe he'd be up for this but i think it has to be almost shared between renee young and charlie caruso just because they're so they're such likable people and they add personality to a role which certain other people just have taken the past and just been very robotic whereas they have such like effervescence and character behind what they do like, Renee Young seems like a new person now that she's off the commentary desk and is now doing backstage. So it suits her so much better, and Chai Caruso's been great in all of the, like, holding down the fort on all of the kickoff shows and things like that. So it, it's hard to choose between the two of them. If I had to choose, I'd probably go Caruso over Renee Young just for, at, at this point in time. 
I feel like Caruso must be getting some pointers from Heyman or Heyman's really taking a liking to her because she used to be very robotic. And the last few months, she's like snapped out of that and really become a person on top of, you know, being an interviewer. Or as he referred to her the other day, Charlie, the shit stirrer Caruso. <laughs> yeah, she's such a little shit stirrer and it's great. Because that's what, you know, like Gene Ogerland, you he wouldn't just interview the people and, okay, that's it. He would stir the pot. Yeah. Finally, we're going to wrap this up for the On Air Personality Awards with the Best and the Worst Commentator. Of course, these are just the commentary teams and the people that have done some kind of guest spots on commentary, too. Not necessarily the people that are just, like, for one match. They are wrestlers that are talking about the feud, and they're there for that. But there are people like JBL popping up for a little bit on WrestleMania, and there's uh, Mike, Shawn Michaels popping up here and there a little bit. So it's everybody that's on that side of things. All the regulars, some of them we don't actually have anymore, like Percy Watson. Some of them are still around. They've been between different shows, like Vic Joseph. And there's all the foreign commentary teams, which I'm pretty sure that we can all agree. Funaki's number one, but he might not necessarily be our best. What's um, that one that Corey Graves is always like making jokes about? Like, oh, I took this one to a barbecue the other night. Like, uh, like Calvin it's one of the Mandarin or something one. like that? It's one of the Mandarin ones. The Meng Dai or Dai Meng. Sean, or... Sean Dang and Meng Ai. Meng, Meng Ai, that's it. That's it, it's Meng Ai. Very funny, I like when Corey does that bit. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't know, like, uh, Shea Sadar. Like, I don't know how he is on commentary. I don't listen to the Hindi version of this. Uh, I did get a kick out of Michael Cole slamming them a little bit at the pay-per-view for cutting into the time the French team had because they were <laughs> <laughs> like, what was that? I also think it's cool that Ray Rougeau is still around. I like that. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Ray Rougeau. But uh, my worst, I think I'm going to go Paige. I don't remember her having a, a single thing worth saying when she was on commentary. Uh, but it was the one match thing, so I'm not going to hold that against Paige. Fuck Jerry Lawler on commentary in 2019. Yeah. I love Jerry Lawler to death. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm a huge fan of his Memphis stuff. I'm a huge fan of his commentary work. We watched 2001 A Wrestling Odyssey, and we're in December where Lawler's going to come back. And it's Lawler's great. Lawler in 2019 is not. He wants to say weird sexual things that don't fly well in this age. He wants to yell, ah! <laughs> It's like, what are you doing? What is this? I think my favorite line from TLC was, oh, but she reminds me of my first wife who wanted to have Olympic sex every four years. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> See, I still gotta like some of the stuff. It's so you know, it's stupid. Like, it fits, but there was the whole Becky Lynch... Now, Becky, we talked back to you. You said you wouldn't get on the oh, table. <laughs> yeah, that was really bad. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You talked about Becky Lynch doing this backstage and she didn't do anything? She just stood on the table? It's like, oh, fuck Jerry Lawler in 2019. <laughs> Shout out to a recent Lawler thing he had put out there. I'm sure he's done it in the past, too, but he had said, uh, I forget who it was. I think it was Eric Rowan. It was like, he was an only child and he wasn't even the favorite. <laughs> so stupid i love it but he does suck in a lot of like he's toned down from what he wants to do for sure and that's a shame he got for worse Callum. let me guess michael cole yeah he's up there but uh <laughs> i'm gonna guess that he's actually gonna go beth phoenix you would be correct in saying that I was oh! beth phoenix. now I, I would say about jerry lawler at the very least i i appreciate jerry lawler on commentary because he's the guy that has essentially got tenure and doesn't give a fuck so even though he has toned himself down, he basically will say whatever he wants to make to amuse himself, and he knows that Vince won't do anything about it because he's got so, he's signed to a long term contract, it seems. And so, um, Michael Cole is if we if we were doing the end of the decade awards, Michael Cole would win this by a landslide in terms of worst because he's the the biggest shit stain on the entire history of this uh, commentary production and everything like like that. He, 
It's and weird because 2002 because... Michael Cole, 2002, 2003, like SmackDown Michael Cole was great. And then he moved to Raw and then he just became the uh, corporate a shill guy. A yeah, the cor- <laughs> yeah. Um, he had a but, gun, though. But even more, <laughs> offensive that, well, even more offensive than that is like it, uh, basically people that are just taking up space on the commentary table, which leads me to Percy Watson and Beth Phoenix, which is, uh, I guess, Percy Watson is less offensive because he got out of there. And the fact they managed to replace him with someone with even less personality is probably quite uh, impressive. Beth Phoenix, great wrestler. She seems like a very nice person, so I don't want to take out too much of her. But she doesn't say any, add any value on commentary. And she says some really weird words and, like, phrase, phrases. I can't – I'm trying to remember, like, pick some of them out, but it's just some weird way of phrasing how certain people are, like, like effervescent or – like exploring their inner psychology or something, so, some really like just weird, like bits and pieces that she throws out there. Like the, the things that she does say don't add anything to the match that's going on and just like leave you like almost having to pause and say, What did she just say? And then rewind and say, Oh, yeah, she did say that. And then just like move on, even less invested in the story that you previously were watching. So See, I think nobody is worse than. Percy Watson when it comes to NXT commentary. So I don't find her as offensive. And I also think she's hilarious with Brazongo. Where she'll just give these weird, like, sexual innuendos on Uh, commentary. I mean, that stuff is funny. But I I thought Percy Watson was great when the Street Profits were on. Like, he always, like, seemed to come alive when the Street Profits were performing. So So they each have the one tag team. Yeah, they each have one thing which I can get involved with. And at least with... um, uh, like the um, the Street Profits, you're probably having a great match alongside that as well, so it was adding a bit more to it. Whereas Chris Angle is more of a comedy, it's more of a comedy stuff. Sons. Yeah, and also like imagine imagine like Beth Phoenix doing that stuff. Imagine if it was Jerry Lawler doing that when the Iconics came on screen. Yeah, he would get ripped to shit, and <laughs> Beth Phoenix gets away with it because, well, again, I don't uh, want to double standards. Like, yeah, double yeah, standards. Yeah, like totally that. fair, totally fair. Yeah, so I don't want to give her like a round of applause because she's objectifying the male wrestlers. Like, fair enough, you want to do it, but then the guy, the guy should be allowed to do that as well. Or neither of you are allowed to do it. Probably the best way of doing it. Yeah. Let's go round this out with best. Are we all go tomorrow? Hell yeah. Nope. Huh? What? All right, now now I got to uh, I got to guess then. Hold I on. Think that, well, I we'll think... talk we'll talk why he doesn't think Mauro, but I I'm oh. curious. Are you picking Samoa Joe? I am picking Samoa Joe. I, I just knew noticed it. Samoa Joe was on the list too. <laughs> Samoa Joe is completely untainted at this point in time by the production team, and so he's allowed to just be himself and country. Samoa Joe is one of the best people they've had on the mic in the last 5 years. And he adds that same sort of value to his commentary as well. He keeps it his understanding of the psychology that's going on in on the matches. He he gives a lot of insight, which is what your kind of like supporting color commentator is supposed to do. Uh, Ronaldo is great; he's the best lead commentator they have. But there there are aspects of uh, Mara Ronaldo's character which rub certain fans up the wrong way. He can go overboard, and obviously. Don't want to call him out on that too much in case he deletes his Twitter again. But <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't feel that way about Samoa Joe. And I'm worried about Samoa Joe in the coming months if he stays on commentary. I mean, he's not going to be on commentary much longer because of what's coming up on Raw soon. Yeah, for context, by the way, everybody, we're recording this on the 21st, so it hasn't happened yet, technically speaking, even though the spoilers are out. Yeah, but I would have been happy of him staying on it for a little bit longer, but he probably would have get, gotten ruined over time because that's the way things work on WWE commentary. Uh, but I'd also give shout-outs to both Byron Saxon and Tom Phillips, because I feel like they were harshly removed from their role, and SmackDown's become a lot worse on the commentary side since they left. I'm glad you said that. I also wanted to do the same and say, you know, Tom Phillips deserves more. Byron Saxon always gave this, like, odd chipperness to the show. And he was always fun. And they got removed for no good reason. So, poor them. 
if we were going to split this as like color and play by play, Joe would be my best color. Yeah. But Maro best uh play by play. I mean, uh, he is sometimes a little bit overboard and does tend to yeah, how many times can you really necessarily listen to something something in fuego tonight or just know. the references. Like yeah, some of the references I, I, I can't sometimes get, but, you know. He shoehorns the references, but that's okay. Like, yeah, he kind of googles like, "What's the big uh, pop well, culture uh, thing coming okay, out?" Okay, what's that trending can... on Twitter? I will fit this into a reference tonight. Rhea Ripley is attacking Shayna Baszler like Ray does in Skywalkers. So it's like what it's. Oh, okay. that's coming. Yeah, yeah I can't. I can't remember the um, specific one. What was the one where he basically said it and then he had to shout it a second time and basically the top was of his it? Line. The I, 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 was that one? Uh, potentially, yeah, it might have been side of that. It's actually just where he just said it, basically trying to flow it in, and then had to say it a second time, even louder, to try and like reinforce Hammer that home. point. Yeah, it's just, but he is great overall. He's definitely adds so much life and story to the matches that he's calling a lot more than any of the other uh, lead commentators do. As as good as well as I don't want to say good, but as inoffensive as Vic Joseph is, is definitely Ronaldo is definitely the best lead commentator they have. I'm I'm not as offended by Michael Cole. I know that's you, you know, should be, you should be. <laughs> but he really won me over when I saw that behind the scenes video where he was just like, I don't want to plug this app anymore, Vince. And right. two seconds later, he's like, Okay, boss. <laughs> so then you, you yeah, yeah he's, you he's great behind the scenes. You should say that. <laughs> it's like that's that should be his role now. Like when he did the uh, NXT UK with Nigel, it was flawless. Yeah, Cole's yeah, when great he... at doing his job. It's just unfortunate that he's being directed to do his job that way. Yeah, well, uh, let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> All well, right. That's, those are your uh, on-air personality awards. Again, as always, as I've been mentioning, if you are on the audio-only platforms, then you will just uh, hear us come back in a couple seconds. But if you are on the YouTube side of things, please click on the next part, because the next one is probably the one that more people are going to be more interested in more than any of the other sections, which is the Wrestler Awards. I'm going to break down everybody from the best news com- uh, newcomer, not newscomer, the best news team. Best newcomer and the tag teams and the heels and faces and male and female superstar of the year and everything else along those uh, sides of things. So check out that part on the next part and we'll see you there, everybody. Ah!